Hi everyone, I'm Alfred. I'm the DM of 10 Rounds of Missing, and I'm so vain, I actually think this song is about me. Everyone else, go! <laughs> My name is Daisy. I'm playing as Andy Wesserson. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> My name is uh, Rose, and I'm playing as Nessa. Dear Nessa. I'm Nessie, not to be confused with Nissa, and uh, I'm playing Bless Her Heart, and it's just heart. <laughs> And we're all trapped in this campaign where we've all made characters with so much overlap, you'd think that they were one blob. All right. So, does anyone remember where we were? We're talking hell. to the matriarch, and, and uh, I guess in hell, you're talking to the matriarch in an alternate dimension, and we accepted her uh, possible dubious help. Uh, by doing a mission for her. Indeed, We're in the indeed. tower of whatever, and we found out that our buddy is a cannibal, and she's like, hey, dude, get out of my house. It's true. Our good friend Archie, the ar ar archivist. Yes. <laughs> yeah, him. That was him. He had a kind of a folksy accent like this, but he was kind of a coot, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so... If you all direct your attention to the map, unless you're an audio-only listener, in which case, go fuck yourself. We're still at Twer's <laughs> Matri. Um, so, you're there, and you can take your horse chariot and go anywhere you'd like. Yeah, we can. Didn't we say something about um, going to the wood area to look for jobs? You could indeed. We had, I think, two or three options, uh, Daisy. You're correct. Uh, I'm trying to look at the map, but it's not. I gotta download it and then open it because it's too blurry. Damn. Well, no, it's on. I, I'm on. Um, what do you call it? I'm on a uh, browser, not on phone or the other one. Oh uh, yeah. Oof. So, uh, the Wood Galaxy and the Quartering Castle are both uh, nice places where you'll probably be greeted relatively well. Uh, the Deeps is a shithole, but it's pretty lawless, which means. If you're being hunted, it's not because you broke the law. It's just because you're on the menu that day. Nice. Um, you can head to the, uh, the little fieldy part, which is immediately to the right of Tuer de Matri, because uh, they're pretty pleasant right there. They don't really get much done, but, you know, they're there. For the quest the Matriarch has given you, you're heading to Alcum Tower. But you could also try to head to the market, which is next to the Deeps, and attempt to procure... Uh, an object of similar power that way. But recall that the matriarch has sent you to Alchem Tower in order to track down the alchemist's alchemit, which will allow her to brew a potion of dimensional travel. Um, we got some options here. Indeed as, far as, I, as far as I meta know, we don't have any gold on us at the moment. Um, uh, so you I guess... looted that angel you murdered. You uh, you took like six pieces out of his wallet, I think. Okay. Let me, let me refresh that. I memory. think I have two silver. <laughs> you could also just pick get... up some odd jobs here and there. Yeah. Then we don't have an immediate need for money, like I thought. Um. Well, then let's go to let's go let's go to the tower. Let's go to the tower. Alcum Tower. Yeah. If there's a fight brewing there we can that we can't handle, we could back out and come back later. Mm -hmm. That's my vote. Everyone else, you know, decide amongst your independent selves. I'm not opposed to head to the tower. Get this done. All right. And that, let us. Uh, who's driving? Andy. Your Andy's driving. Oh, then Andy. Let's go. Let's uh, let's uh, let's ride or whatever it is they say. What do they say on the farm whenever you go with an animal? Usually some swear words and uh. Ah fuck! The damn horse stepped on my toes again. <laughs> Mother, is that you? <laughs> I still hear her voice sometimes. <laughs> it's like she's still with us. I'm not dead. <laughs> Stop telling everyone I'm dead. <laughs> Well then, let's uh, 
pack our shit up and head out, as my my pa used to say. <laughs> shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Let's go. So I'm gonna take the sugar cube key out of my pocket and hand it to our horse is uh, Archie, our dear friend, just chilling. Yeah. All right. You can have him um, stay here if you'd like. He can't go anywhere, but you know he's here. I think I'd rather keep him with us. I don't know. What do you guys think? He has knowledge, and that's helpful. I think that we should keep him around. I think he could be a very, very useful resource. And also, in a medicine, I feel like we'll forget him if we leave him behind. I feel like we can't leave him here because he's not allowed in the house. Yeah, no artist left behind. And that would be mean to just leave a man to roam the, like, maybe 40 square feet of shitty grass that seems to be here. <laughs> Yeah, recall it's explicitly just worse than the rest of the grass. Sure is. Um, Except for the tiny hedge that Andy grew. <laughs> I wanted our car to stay put. <laughs> it's not like we have an emergency parking brake or anything, so. Um. Archie, we're we're headed to Alcom Tower after all. All right. Uh, we're we're looking for something. Well, shoot, damn! Let's climb the hoss and get on our way. Where are we heading? We're we're off to Alcom Tower. Well, yeah, but like, which way? We going east or south? Oh. Uh, we're gonna take the way farthest from the Citadel. Valid. Uh, Cause I'm not I'm not used to this uh, being a, a wanted criminal thing. I am. Uh, I worry about you, Archie. Don't worry about me. I've got these, and he just kind of chomps his teeth at you. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> you get used to it, Andy. <laughs> what exactly do you do you archivize? I'm starting to worry. Uh books. Do the, are the books people? No. <laughs> I don't work in a library. I just happen to eat. I don't have, like, my life isn't my job. I just happen to work at the library. I respect that. Eating angels as come separate. Respect, as long as you respect that I do not want to be eaten, I am putting it out there. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm also putting it out there. I prefer to be your very wonderful chompers be kept away from my entire existence well i wouldn't gain any powers from eating you guys not unless you had some kind of like we had bloodline born with powers or something but like barring that you know wouldn't be I'll that smack shit out you you look at me like that wouldn't be worth my time <laughs> i mean just empty calories you know that's fair enough all right so i'm gonna uh, pick up the Rains or so and start guiding our way around the core. Hell yeah. Um, about 20 minutes into the journey, you come to those big ass fields, as you may have seen, with a scarecrow on top of it. Yeah, that's to scale. Yeah. The scarecrow actually is like as long, as tall as the island is long. It's a massive fucking scarecrow. I've had nightmares like this. So you can see it from where you are. It's a fucking gigantic scarecrow. Reminds me of Grandpa Arnold. Yep. What was Grandpa Arnold like? As a... <laughs> we impaled him on a stick and left him in the fields. It was the end of well, World anyway. War Nine, the Scare Wars. <laughs> That's certainly a way to. I didn't before. know you knew about that, Archie. <laughs> oh, I have knowledge of before this world was born. I'm very much afraid of you. <laughs> You impaled a dude? Well, Grandpa what? died in his sleep. Arnold was a cruel man. He had a face that could scare babies in the womb. So we figured he'd keep the crops safe from the crows. Just like our dear friend Archie here. The crows back home try to eat people. And so we figured Grandpa Arnold would protect our carrots and stuff. And Didn't really work. Smelled bad, but it was, the plants grew real well. Andy, what the fuck 
kind of hell world are you from? It's called Earth. <laughs> Gross. It's pretty bad. For some reason, I thought you were from a place called Kansas. I don't. Was I mistaken in that model? Earth is sectioned off into two sections. Uh, we've got Kansas and Japan. <laughs> It was way, it's it's far too dangerous to let a fellow DM and world builder have a universe they come from. <laughs> Look at this shit that's now all canon. We have to, all this is now canon. What am I going to do? Are you insulting Kansas and Japan, the earth? I'm, I'm crucified yeah. here by this. I can't do nothing. <laughs> of course you can. It's where he's from. Exactly. Oh my God. You don't want to hear what happened to Michigan. It was real tragic. The crows of, got to it. This is of course out of canon, after what that the fuck happened that... in Michigan. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was those crows. Texas released the strain of it was, it was after you know Texas versus Texas in World War Five. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah, COVID nineteen. <laughs> God damn it! Oh boy. <laughs> Jesus Christ! They they engineered these. Yeah, I, you you know things too. Are you, are we from the same earth? I don't believe so, dear Andy. Though I appreciate. I just I I had a feeling. You unleashed a nightmare. What yeah, the this? the birds they they just set out and they just ate all of Michigan, starting with the children <laughs> in the buildings. It was real tragic. Part of the five basic they food ate. groups. Buildings, children, grains, wheat, they and ate corn. Children. They, they ate the the same same thing. adults. The children were more fun, I've been told. I talked to them from time to time. They were quite frightening. <laughs> it's going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm like just a... telling y'all about home. Are you are you not appreciating? <laughs> We're from a world of floating islands and angel cannibalism. I mean, to I think we're on a fair playing field. The angel cannibalism is not standard. It's just him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, personally, Andy, I think that uh, we should pass the journey a different way. Talk about quite literally anything else, anyone else's home world, anything else in this world. I am scared. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, this is great. I'm DMing here. I don't have to do shit. So that scarecrow's pretty scary. You think they worship it? Uh, well, that that I'm not sure about. Um, I've never really been there. They uh, kind of got this like uh, anti bullshit defense system set up around the whole thing. Magical, which means that you know, pretty annoying to deal with, but. Uh, they're one of the few places the angels can't reliably fuck with. That does sound pretty handy. And, um, Andy, as you pass by, uh, you feel this, like, green sparkly feeling on the side of your body closest to, uh, the farmlands. Ooh. Like, can I identify what it is? Uh, yeah, make an arcana check. I can do that. Uh, gotta find the exclamation point. But yeah, it smells like springtime, but like a feeling of smell, like you're 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 sensing with the wrong sense. You're smelling something with your arm, you know. Oh, I got a fat seven. Well, in that case, you're um, you're yeah, you it's there. <laughs> You're like, wow, the farm. It's green. <laughs> Can someone else make an arcana check? <laughs> I don't think it's possible. Yes, sure. No, I was I, I, I wasn't asking you, Nessie. I was asking in general the DM. The DM said yes. I have a very high <laughs> arcana. It was, can I do it? But I didn't phrase it like that. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and try. <laughs> really? Okay, that's fine. I tried and I got a four, so you well, know. I got a ten. That's three higher than the book. 
<laughs> you know, if we add those all together, it's almost like you guys succeeded. <laughs> yeah, that'd be twenty one. Really allergic, apparently. Uh, collectively, you're all like, "Yeah, that's weird." <laughs> huh? Wonder what that's about. Well, anyway, back to eating Cheetos on the back of this chariot. At least we know it's safe from the angels if things get too messy. I don't really want to go there. But... I'll go ahead and throw you this. Andy, you feel a familiarity that you've literally never felt before. And it still disgusts you. You still hate it. But like, hey. It's, oh, like, man. it's like your cousin you hate. That's what it feels like to you. It's like you're simultaneously <laughs> smelling spring with your with your sense of touch. And you're like seeing your cousin that you hate with your heart. It makes sense. Yeah. Some sort of magic bullshit. I, I was, don't know. I was going to say magic bullshit. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we've got a haven to go to, but I'd rather save it's it as a. Explanation. Yeah. I bet their crows don't eat people. I would certainly hope not. <laughs> You're free to make a diversion. I think most and, uh... crows don't eat people. <laughs> You're free to make a diversion and go over and look if you like, but that's up to you. Would y'all mind investigating just a moment? Like the, the sorry, the skill check or like <clears throat> going over there? Just enough to see what's going on because it's got my interest. The latter. Uh, I guess we could spare a moment or two. I mean, it's not like I have a dimension to go back to. So onward, onward. All right. Onward. You handily divert that uh, that that uh, chariot there. Do you want to like hover around the around the little island, or do you want to like set it down and step down? Um, I think I want to step on the island itself. Okay. Um. So you bring it in very very calmly, very cautiously. The horse is very at peace here. Uh, he it's spit, good to see he, the creature knows peace. Yep. He spits out the little sugar cube in such a way that it like lands on his reins and dangles there so he can grab it if you need it. Uh, and he starts grazing. Mm -hmm. The grass here is even brighter than than normal. Like I mentioned that it's all this like toxically bright, like super cool, super cute, like pastel grass. Yeah. Um But like man. That stuff's that stuff's for real. You're like, damn, that's hot. Quite lush here. And Andy, uh, you gain ten temporary hit points the second your feet touch this grass. Oh, I feel real real nice here for some reason. I I don't like that. <laughs> uh, it ugh feels ugh. Like when, right before the first time I, I transformed into the horse to fighter. That, ugh. It is a similar feeling. If you'd like, you can try another Arcana check. Yeah. Find my exclamation point. Let's get them clackety clacks going. So I take it this is some of that uh, nature magic bullshit. It sure as hell feels like it. It uh, certainly it's a as hell is. 17, what do I got? Your druid sense is tingling, and it has been tingling. You're sensing oh. an influx of nature magic, and most likely, other druids. Oh god, there's more like me here. There's many more, in fact, if, you're, uh, if your druid sense tingling is anything to go on, and it certainly is. I got some sort of brain radar yep. thing. So the whole... Is... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. The whole area is uh, so lush with nature magic that it's almost like stepping into a Feywild or another um, pocket universe. Uh, because this dimension is so weird, uh, there isn't a planet here and the dimension itself is kind of weak. The walls of said dimension are kind of pliable. All semi-permeable as shit, which is why teleportation can be blocked through here, but they've almost turned this little area into a demiplane in and of itself. Any druids here gain temporary hit points. Um, you will regenerate health and spell slots while you're here. Uh, and 
most of the people here are either druids, nature clerics, uh, fey warlocks, nature warlocks, ancient paladins, that sort of thing. They're all the nature subclasses. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And all of Except them. Except your three new dumbass friends. <laughs> yeah. And all of them gain abilities from uh, that nature, which is why they're pretty unflappable and unfuckable when it comes to the angels. The angels don't have any innate bonus while they're standing anywhere. And they, in fact, double don't have a bonus here where their enemy does. It's why they're so hard to fuck with. Well, hopefully we can make an ally of them. Well, considering yeah. you got one in your party, it shouldn't be that hard. Well, you never know how the individuals are like, Archie. Never. Do not underestimate my ability to make enemies from people. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. We have three individuals in this party who have been strung together by some sort of fate, but that does not mean that we are instantly welcome to all in this odd, odd plane. Andy is not even from here. They might not even accept him immediately, or at all. I mean, you're not from here either. I'm not looking to be accepted, though. I didn't come Fair here enough. to make friends. <laughs> I didn't come here at all, intentionally. <laughs> I got sucked I off to here. <laughs> To make bubblegum and chew ass. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some mighty weird hobbies, friend. <laughs> so, are you perhaps uh, allying with, with Archie? Is there more cannibalism going on? Oh my god. <laughs> no. I saw somebody made a stupid vine of that and it made me laugh really hard. Vines, more nature. <laughs> oh, gross. Vine exists. That's canon. Oh, no. I'm okay with that. Vine can be canon in this world. It never went offline. It's fine. Yeah, that's where we're, that's why the world blew up. The vine, vine you know? <laughs> yeah. Somebody did it for Vine. That's the, that's the dark world if Vine isn't... <laughs> vine isn't nuked off the face of the internet. <laughs> The planet blows up like in fucking F. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh, fucking great. Oh, God. So uh, you all are standing at uh, one of the corners, essentially. Uh, it's not exactly shaped very well. It is just a fragment of, of rock with uh, dirt and grass on top. But they've <laughs> attempted to section out as best they can. It's It's like looking at Kansas from an airplane, you know? They've got all yeah. the little squares. Um, you're currently uh, hunkered down a little bit behind a big ass cornfield. Uh, a little north of you is a probably a like football field sized field of soybeans. Everything is exceptionally flat. Yeah, it is. It is the whole thing is flat. Like it's flat. There's farmlands. That's about it. You haven't even seen a barn yet. Oh boy. If you'd like, you can walk further inland. Or you can get the hell mm -hmm. out of here. We'll return if things get dicey, but it's comforting to know we've got a place where I'll be a bit more useful. Indeed you do. All right, so you all hop back on? Yeah. Cool. Uh, as you leave, the um, uh, temporary hit points all fade from you... Uh, one point per turn, but, you know, one point every six yeah. seconds, so they're gone in a minute. Yeah. And you can feel uh, the inherent effect, uh, the passive effect, that would regenerate your health and spell slots, leaving you as well. Okay. But other than that, you're uh, still pretty fine. If you had been missing any hit points, this place would have topped you off. It doesn't take you back down to where you were before you came here. It just leaves you at whatever the top was. Okay. Which means that short rests are, uh... oh yeah, I also wanted to say, it uh, regenerates hit die. Oh. Which I means like that, that you can continually take short rests, and you don't actually need to long rest there, which is also pretty helpful. Because even though night is kind of hard to pin down here, um, yeah, the druids don't need to sleep there. They can just keep fucking going. Party oh. island. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But... You got a party with a bunch of nature boys. 
Disgusting. Partying with the hippies. I bet they like horses. Uh. I don't know if it's worth it. I might take my chances with the angels. Yeah. All right, so we continue on our drive. Yep. All right, let me pull that map back up. You've passed the farmlands, and you can now see the edge of the wooden galaxy. Um, it's a lot bigger than it's depicted on this map. It's probably, like, the size of a couple of uh, United States. Oh. It is all wood. It's all, like, some of them are small as, like, little toothpicks. Some of them are, like, the trunks of trees. Some of those fucking things are, like, house-sized or, or skyscraper size. That's a lot of wood there. And it's all swirling in this big spiral. And it's so packedly... It's so tightly packed. It's so dense. You can't even see what that center is. Wow. Um, as you get nearer to it, you can see that some people have used said wood to build houses. They've uh, cut some of the larger pieces into planks and assembled them there in open space. Um, so it kind of looks like like the house from Up without any balloons. Just a, a completely normal suburban Whoa. house that's just been yanked out of the earth. Interesting. A little bit. Uh, some of them are ramshackle lean-tos that aren't actually leaning on anything because there, you know, isn't an earth. There isn't uh, anything but the wood. Uh, and still some have used uh, axes and other crude carving tools and just sort of hacked caves out into the bigger things, like a, like a giant squirrel living in a giant tree trunk. How's that? Um, Looks like after a tornado been through, but like my tornado. Yeah. What the fuck is a tornado? I also am a piece on this. It's a windy it's female when, deer. Uh, the uh, oh, uh, sorry, it's, it's sorry, when sorry. the the yeah. heavens uh, they sort of throw all the wind around and it it uh, attacks in sort of like a grill shape, like like heaven is drilling on things and it pulls stuff all over. It's real messy. And y'all just put up with that? <laughs> I, we tried fighting them. That's how we lost my uncle, uh, my uncle Joseph. <laughs> All right. He tried going in there with just his bare fists and it, the drill just yanked him off. I'm sure he went to where Michigan was at one point. The tornado wars. That was World yeah. War II in this world. It's true. It was just it was just God versus us. Bunch of Missourians just sitting on their decks watching a tornado. That's that's how we Missouri actually uh, rallied up and decided to fight the tornadoes by themselves with their armchairs in hand. Yeah, lift them weak so they could be conquered by Kansas. It made actually, it real easy. We just snuck in and we took it over. Real human me feels a little bit called out by this. What? That Missourians <laughs> like are all I'm just going to sit on their deck with their, like, gold yeah, schlager and watch a tornado? It. And then they took their armchairs into hand and went and fought for their right to tornado watch? <laughs> they fought back in the end and lost. Well, I don't need to go inside. It's just a Kansas World War warning, not a Kansas World War watch. Or is it the other way around? They've been blaring that siren. And my kid's been doing vine dances to it all night. Don't want to interrupt the youngins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this oh is good. God, we're getting off topic. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is just the new topic. We're world building, you know? <laughs> Whole podcast. It's just world building. Collective world. I've done that. Collective world building is one of the joys of D&D. &D, and this really isn't normally what we would have done. Like Missourians, you know, the whole Midwest getting up in arms to fight a tornado and then like Game of Thrones-esque <laughs> descending into themselves and causing a civil war. It wasn't, it wasn't just one tornado. Let me get that clear. It was hundreds of them. They were wearing armor. Oh, they yeah. <laughs> The tornado army. Yeah. Oh my god, I need a warning before you say shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till you hear about when the earthquakes came with guns. It got it was bad. 
California didn't stand Fine. a chance. <laughs> I'm trying to drink a drink. That's <laughs> your fault. That's, you That's your fault. I know. 30 minutes in. <laughs> I'm thirsty. Oh man, this is great. Oh, this is good. This is good, y'all. I like this. I love this. I'm just trying to tell y'all stories about my hometown. Y'all are disrespecting. I did. I I I stated I stated to the intent earlier that we should keep all discussion of your hometown to a minimum on this current journey as it is concerning to the welfare of both Hart and myself. And Ren was then knocked I unconscious. <laughs> You're not gonna stop me, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> the archivist has been scribbling this down by the way he's taking little notes I knew all this <laughs> now no, he, he, only, he has notes Ugh, I like the it. only difference between screwing around in science is whether or not you write it down yep we got us a scientist on board I heard about these folk in the big city What's folks that died to the crows yeah, I mean, Ren's right over there, yeah. I'm sorry? You're the only fucking scientist we got here. I guess what I Unless do. you count library sciences, in which case I suppose we also have Archie. <laughs> oh, I always, I always respect the science of uh, learning and reading. I, I, I mean, I had to do a lot of it to get to where I am. I think I know how to read. I mean, same. Where are we on our journey? I'm, we're, we're, we're moving forward. Literally, we need to move forward. <laughs> oh, the wooden galaxy is really long. I was just going to let you guys role play, you know, to get <laughs> to get a feel of how fucking big this place is. We'll eventually have to come back here and act like a bunch of squirrels get our way through there. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. Your druid senses tingle, but just because of, like, the nature. Of the, you know what? You know what fucking Star Wars 4 where Obi-Wan's like, oh, fuck, I'm feeling some shit, man. Yeah. You're like some force shit just happened. That's what you're like. You're like, oh man, some nature shit some happened nature here. Shit. Yeah. I'd be feeling a lot of that up here. Yep. Uh, you're free to go in and look around, but there's not in as much land. Um, you could like try to land on one of the biggest pieces, but like still only going to get so far. We'll save it for the return trip. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next, you're all heading to the deeps. That's also a really big place. It's like the size of a whole continent. Like if you just like cut Asia out of our planet Earth, like if you just like snip the whole thing out and then let it float in space, that's what you're looking at here. That's a nightmare. Thank yep. you. Uh, it is covered in tiny little holes that all allow uh, easy access to it. <laughs> and just from looking at it, you can tell that the whole thing is like an anthill. It's all, it's all just... The inside is all tunnels and caves. We'll Y'all got like and, uh, knock your ants around here or something? No, just people. Specifically, uh, North, you as Hart would know that the Deeps is primarily populated by uh, underground races and warforged or robots, if you prefer. Oh, my people. My other, my other me people. <laughs> <laughs> In I miss the world. them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's there's drow, uh, dwergar, dwarves, grimlocks, uh, myconids. Uh, hold on, I got it. Snurveflin? Snurveflin? <laughs> Fuck, I hate that word. Why did they write it like that? God damn you, Gary Gygax. It was just to spite you. That's it was. It. It was because he, he knew that I would have to say it every time and he knew that I wouldn't shrink from this challenge. I knew that I would have to do it. Just call him something else. Make up a word. Your well, God. Their actual you can their do actual that. term is the gray gnomes, I think. The deep gnomes. Because you got elves and dark elves. You got gnomes and deep deep gnomes. You got <laughs> dwarves and Dwergar. They have another one. Fuck. Anyway, there's also a few goblins and uh, the last few pure-blooded orcs. Um, in this world, uh, most of the orcs have just gone extinct because uh, half-orcs are just, often cases, more viable, you know? Most valid. 
Uh, orcs are also uh, subject to culling by the angels because the angels don't like them. Well, that's pretty mean. Oh, yeah. Um, They're just trying their hardest. However, the Deeps is another safe place from the angels for a completely different reason from the farmlands. In the case of the farmlands, it's because it's all druids who are hopped off on enough shit to make them all go Super Saiyan at every hour of the day. The Deeps is the size of Asia, but also as big as actual Asia. It's so fucking huge, you couldn't possibly search all of it. There isn't even a map of the whole place. There's only local maps, and the locals know those maps. And if you have to get anywhere between the large settlements, you might just be better tunneling through the rock. It might save time, even. It's a huge place. And, of course, that just makes another tunnel, which makes the whole thing even more complicated again. Oof. You might go to use the tunnel you used last time, and someone might have used it to uh, as a trash dump for the rocks they made when they were making their own new tunnel. And they might be going to a completely different place. Yeah, this place is kind of a fucking mess. It's a nightmare in there. The thing with ants is that somehow, despite their lack of organization proper, they can still... Uh, do absolutely massive construction projects that like it's like if you if you had a hundred people and you all told them to build a skyscraper and they all work together and built a functioning skyscraper in like three days that's what ants are uh he, the the people who live here they they don't have that you know at best the warforged have kind of an uh almost like an internet they have like a wi-fi in their heads that connects them to each other that's pretty handy yeah, but the Warforged don't dig a lot of tunnels. They don't need to move from where they are. They've they've got their they've got their uh, occupation pretty locked down, so to say. Um, but everyone else, tough shit. You gotta go. You know, you gotta get your caravans up. It's a it's a problem. It's a whole fucking thing. All right, no so ever live here. Good place to hide. Oh yeah. They'll never find you, with the caveat that you might never find your way out. Yeah, a worst let's, case scenario. Let's mark that one down as a uh, last, sort of last resort, perhaps. Are you sure? Did you see the look of that scarecrow? Yeah, and I would rather deal with a giant fucking scarecrow than right. lose myself into a mind that I can never find my way out of. All right, heart. Well, last resort. Underlined, italicized. Somebody else write it down. Archie, you got this? Yes. Sorry. I was uh, staring into space, listening to y'all role play. I mean, to talk. <laughs> anyway, next Archie's up on our tour of this spicy. map. If you look over there, you can see uh, the market. Uh, the market is very clearly cut of the same stone that the deeps was. Um, and in fact, it was a part of the deeps, and then it fell off. It's only the size of, like, uh, a city block, uh, skyscrapers included, I would say. Um, All right. Which means that it's a lot easier to get around because, you know, at worst, you're going to be walking for, like, 10, maybe 20 minutes to get the hell out of there. Uh, and as a result, it has a lot more hollows and a lot more use because it is intended as a market, as, a, as it says. Uh, this is why uh, over at Twitter de Matri, the matriarch recommended that if you can't find the alchemit, then you can go to the black market because they got a lot of shit there. The deeps, seeing as it is a uh, the biggest chunk of the former planet, has a lot of natural resources in it. It's all coal and gold, iron, even mithril or whatever we're calling it in this uh, no uh, rights violating uh, playthrough of D&D. &D. In this yeehaw D&D. &D. Yeah. <laughs> Myth y'all. It's, it's... Myth y'all. Yeah, yeehaw three y'all. There you go. If it's... Yeah, it's called... I can hear Gary Gygax rolling in his fucking grave right now. What's he rolling? Do you think it's a hot, do you think it's like an 11? <laughs> it's oh. not good. Fail. <laughs> He's rolling a critical fail on not enjoying this podcast from wherever the hell he is. 
It's my life goal right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary. I didn't mean to blaspheme your name. <laughs> Oh, this is the worst and the best at the same time. We've been at this for like an hour. We have. <laughs> We're trapped. All right, that's the last stop, though. You're free to you're free to go to the Elgin Tower now. <laughs> All right, y'all. We got a plan for this. We we head in. Tell them that we were told there were magical folk. We're we're laying low. Play innocent. Mm. All right. Can do. All right. Unless y'all got another plan to get our hands on some sort of med. I ain't no good at stealing stuff. Well, hold on. I've got something. Uh, the archivist uh, takes out one of his books and opens it to the page, uh, opens it to the section D. And then uh, he flips to a DI for a disguise kit and pulls out uh, a couple oh. of fake beards. <laughs> oh my God. We'll be like unnoticed it. if we wear these, you know. All right, I'll throw on a fake beard. <laughs> he puts one on. Uh, it's very itchy. How unpleasant. Are they all the same type of beard? Are they stylized differently or different lengths? As you can see, I don't think a very long beard would suit me very well. Um, You're not sure if style is even the right word. They look more like he killed like a beaver and just kind of stuck it on his face. Nice. Can I be the one to point out the obvious here that of, you know, all of us, you two are the least likely to get recognized because you're not from here. I still know that's true. You don't know that. I do know that because I'm from here. <laughs> well, it's not about recognition, dear dear heart. It's about making sure that we are not remembered. They might remember us wearing beavers on our face. <laughs> I feel like you've only made yourself more noticeable. Yes. Yeah, so I say this as someone who is six and a half feet tall and purple. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here, now we can put these on, and then later we'll take them off. We're new people again. They'll never have known us in, to begin with. Well, that's quite, right. It's rather, rather poetic of you, but <laughs> having all the, the itching of the beards, as interested as I was, I do think that uh, sneezing might be a, a might bit suspicious on oh. my end. What if we just say oh. there's a cold going around? Oh, my God. Like, you know... Diseases are very, very common in this part of the world. There's not a lot of health care. It's just mostly for the angels, and boy, the deeps is a shithole. What if we just say, like, oh, I ate an angel. He had the cold. Uh, I've got his cold now, you know? No. No? <laughs> uh, fuck's sake, Archie. Just put on a beard, I guess. Jesus. Um, it's like stuff I your have... head into a goat. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting one on. I just told him to put one on. <laughs> like, put one on if it'll make you shut up. Jesus, put it on. Fine. <laughs> I have um, I have an idea once we... If we can find this mitt, um, I, I can, if I choose to, turn into animals sometimes. To, to a degree, there's not a whole lot I can be. Um, but I have discovered that when I turn into an animal, anything that's on my person hides in the animal body. So my clothes, uh, anything I'm holding in my possession. So if I can get my hands on this mitt and transform into something and scurry away, they won't be able to find it until I turn back into a person. This is good information. I think that's, that is our plan, Andy. Solid, a solid, solid thinking there. All right, so you're all going to go set it down? Yeah. All right. So there's not a, uh, there's not a land in as much as you, can, as you may be able to see. The Elkham Tower is like a tower snapped off of a much larger castle. All right. So you just kind of <laughs> lay, the, lay the, the chariot down on like a side of it. Gravity's a little wonky in here. Um, 
Because, like, it behaves like gravity should, so you stick to the outside of the tower. Ooh. Uh... It's a, it's like a Mario Galaxy, you know? You're just kind of hanging out on the side. Uh, you let yourself in through one of the windows, and uh, you're in a staircase. A staircase that actually just leads to uh, an open, yawning void. Uh, there's also um, the up way, which uh, just goes up the staircase, Nor. Okay. I'm not a fan for voids. I think we should uh, continue on with upward. Yeah. You get used to voids, but yes, we probably should go up. Talio, I'll lead the way. All right. As you get on up there, uh, the lights uh, stop being the sunlight of the outdoors and instead change to a greenish chemical light. Ew. Uh, okay. Ren, you would probably recognize this. Oh? Uh, seeing as it's uh, kind of high science in this uh, mostly low, uh, in, mostly in this high fantasy realm, uh, she's been using uh, doped um, uranium for, uh, for uh, lamps here. That's a bit not good. A lot not good, actually. Yeah, you know. I like the pretty colors. I promise you they will not be so pretty if once they break and invade your veins. We must keep very, very clear of the lights. So like a fucking parasite? What are you talking Invade your veins? Jesus. It's, it's sort of like... Hmm, how do I explain this, dear? Like, hmm, it's like whenever you put something into a puddle of water, and when you pull your hand out, the water sticks, and it absorbs into your skin. That is what the light could do to us, especially badly if broken. Only instead of nice, cool, needed water, it is poison. Slow, 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 slow poison death. All right. I don't like any of those things. No, no, they're not very fun. I dread to meet the person who thought of this in such a broken up world. I should have known they were bad. They're green. <laughs> they're green. green. It's always evil. <laughs> Oh, man. I love that. This is a little off topic, but did you know that it was an actual assumption of the Norse and uh, other followers of uh, various pagan myths that Thor hated trees? What? That's why, why trees always be getting struck by lightning. Thor's like, fuck you, tree. Throws a lightning bolt at it. <laughs> got a thunder. Bam. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I like that. That's fucking impeccable. I love it. <laughs> like, they're all just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Collectively, that tracks, yeah. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. So we're we're climbing, we're dodging these lights the best we can. All right. Um, so as you guys get on up, you come to a large uh, circular room lined with shelves. It's a couple hundred uh, thousand books, I would say. Oh, my. Um, very large stained glass windows. You can't see it on the map, but like uh, those little those little uh, black little tombstone drawings on the Alcum Tower, those are uh, mm -hmm. very large stained glass windows. Um, they depict a uh, peasant kneeling before a handsome male king. Uh, they depict a uh, handsome female king uh, being burned at the stake and suffering righteously before a crowd of like uh, ugly, ug ugly peasants, I'll say. All right. Um, hmm. there's a uh, kind of there's a kind of sh um shrubbery. Oh God, what am I thinking? When someone's kind of beat up and dirty, rubbishy, rough around the edges, <laughs> shrubbish. Yeah. Anyway, they're uh, they're they're bedraggled. Thank you. Um. There's a bedraggled, uh, disgraced male king uh, mixing some potions. And then the last one is uh, broken and has been uh, haphazardly duct taped up with uh, black garbage bags. Oh, because that's not a bad omen or anything. Yeah. 
How high up are these? Uh, the windows are about 40 feet tall, and they're about 20 feet off the ground. Dang. Okay. Never mind then. Um, the shelves don't extend all the way around the room, although they're also very tall. Um, also in the room is a very, very large work table. It's like a gigantic Chinese buffet table. You could, you could seat 40 at that fucking thing. Wowza. It's absolutely covered in scraps of paper, um, various, uh, spilled and unspilled glass little bottles. Uh, various potions and poultices, uh, spilled little packets of dust, uh, other dust contained in jars, uh, books open and closed, and as I said, like a whole fucking printer just fucking threw up here, man. Like there is so much goddamn paper, and it all has this uh, messy, untidy scrawl that you can tell at one point was cursive, but then got too quick. They they started writing too fast, too frenzied. Somewhere in that mess, you can see um, a semi-grandmotherly woman. Um, like, her kids are old, but she hasn't ha they haven't had kids yet. So, like, she's almost a grandma. She's probably, like, 52, maybe a little older. Uh, Is that grandma age? <laughs> pre-grandma, you know? It depends. Definitely pre-grandma, because, like, my mom's in her 50s and I'm 20. 20s, uh, yeah, not 2020. And like, if you were, if if this was like a hundred years earlier, and we were like regular people instead of like mor uh, Morlocks, then like you could conceivably have kids by now. It'd be weird, but you could. That's fair, I guess. But yeah, so she's like just pre-grandma. Um, she's wearing a uh, frumpy brown and blue dress and a uh, black apron with white writing uh, in front of it. Does anyone know Elvish by chance? Uh, let me check. Where the fuck is that even? Where is my proficiency? Oh God. I, I got not where my languages are. It's um them. next to it. So on the it's on the right side below. Um, it's next to like your tools and others. Um, above your actions and bonus actions um, yeah I'm not um, I straight up can't find that uh, so I'm just gonna assume that no I probably can't speak elvish <laughs> that's fair not for me either damn oh well it'll remain a mystery Boo. One day we'll figure it out. Oh, fuck, I found it. Yeah, no, I, I still don't speak Elvish, but, like, I did find it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nothing, you know. Her hair is frizzy. Her glasses kind of rest haphazardly on, like, her forehead. Um, and she is uh, currently snoozing just a little bit. All and right. Then, in another corner of this uh, circular room, so, you know, not corner in the literal sense, more a theoretical one, there's a large workstation similar to the uh, buffet table, but with a lot more machinery and equipment on it. There's those uh, big uh, glass balls that, like, have tubes coming out of them that you use for potion brewing. It's also like a uh, very classical grandmotherly oven. Mm, you know, don't with trust the, that. the uh, stove burners on top kind of thing that you could imagine there'd be like a pie in the middle of um this little uh like kitschy like autumnal hand towels uh, yeah also with elvish embroidered on them uh tucked into the handle of the uh, of the oven some pot holders <laughs> hanging from the cupboards uh, and one of them is a oven mitt that glows with arcane power Well, that looks pretty suspicious. Do we want to just fucking take it? Uh, I think that we should ask first. We, and it's rude to disturb someone from their nap, but I think that coming in and stealing something magical, I just have a feeling there might be some sort of protection on it. I can identify if needed, but it'll take a couple bits. Well, she's not going anywhere. You can you can take some time here. If I can switch out my spells, I do have locate object. We know where the object is. It's just that I—it's figuring out if that's the object we need. 
as opposed to it just being an oven mitt that's got some other ability. How long will it take you to switch out your spells? That's up to our Lord and Savior. Uh, it's the oven mitt you're looking for. Okay. <laughs> Handy. I'll just go ahead and tell uh, you. It's not that deep. <laughs> Um, blah, 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 blah. can I well I would like to cast identify so can we just remain uh, undisruptive for 10 minutes while I ritual cast this I just, sure because it, tell, it tells how to use it and the spells affecting it and the properties so I think that information would be useful okay go ahead so I'm going to ritual cast that if anyone wants to take a gander at the books and the wait, wait did we already pass the books or the books are also in this room I'm just trying to make sure yeah it's one gigantic room Okay. If anyone wishes to take a gander at the books, I'm curious as to what they uh, entail. I have a great love of learning, but obviously I am busy at the moment. I can't read. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she probably can, but she's honestly maybe just fucking with you at this point. Ren gives a terse sigh and says, Ar- uh, Archivist, could you, could you be a dear? Yes. What am uh, I doing? Just let me... This telling me the genre of the books, what this uh, motherly woman indeed indulges in. Uh, he starts to like run down them, like all speed reading with his eyes flicking all over the place. Oh my god! Um, he comes back to you after like one uh, circle of the room. He's like, "Holy shit, man!" Oh, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. What genres there aren't here? Interesting. There's all manner of fiction books. There's a lot of history books on this world. A lot of them are banned. Like, you're not supposed to have these. I do, but, like, I'm a lawbreaker anyway. Hardcore, baby. Uh, But this lady also has a bunch of, uh, like, really, really illegal books. Like, about the planet before it blew up. About the angels and what they did. Uh, All kinds of crazy shit. Um, There's also a good deal of alchemy and uh, baking books, which are more closely interrelated than you would think. Uh, a lot of fiction, um, romance novels. I guess she gets bored. Uh, there's some high fantasy stuff, which I guess is just called like urban fantasy yeah. here. I don't know. It's Got life. Got <laughs> fiction. It's regular stuff, you know. It's... Uh, Archivist, you happen to have a uh, 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 I don't know how to phrase it in this world, but uh, picture perfect memory. Do you have an ability to? Remember the things that you've read and reiterate them almost perfectly to us. Nope, but I got a notepad. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I, uh, for our sake, could you take notes on the ones concerning the angels and the world before it destroyed itself? Yes, he can do that. Thank you. I would appreciate it. All right. I'm just going to, I'm not going to make a sound for ritual casting. I'm just humming to myself, I guess, and just like, Focusing my energy. Here, I'll do the sound. <laughs> okay, imagine that, but like for 10 minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. Palpatine just healing his wounds. <laughs> <laughs> is, there anything you two wish to be do- uh, is there anything you two wish to be doing while I'm casting this? And I'm casting more so as, my- as Rose, not as uh, Ren. Um... Gosh. All Andy wants to do is grab this thing and go. But... So, he, so he's, he's a bit antsy. Ren, Ren, uh, Ren, so then as Ren, I'll say, Andy, if you're, if you're nervous, do you, like, it's, like, she doesn't even open her eyes. She can just sense his anxiety. And your, your nerves are a bit putting me off. If you want to take a get, you cannot read. Right. Uh, maybe there are some pictures <laughs> for you to. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's some pictures for you know what? You got a you got a point. Maybe there's hope around the science tables, I guess. Indeed, please tell me what you find. I, I'm very curious. It'd be great help. <laughs> uh, Ram. Ram. Mm, yes. How um, how about how time limit? How how long does it take you to do that? Whatever it is you're doing. Ten minutes. We're about two minutes in. Uh, the archivist took a gander much faster than I anticipated. Cool. Uh, fuck it, I forgot my name. I'm just gonna start, um, like, cleaning my revolver, like, quietly. Alright. That sounds productive, I encourage. Forgot my goddamn name. Jesus. 
You're doing great. Oh, I'm a menace. <laughs> so then Andy's looking through the picture books. I want to look at the uh, uh, roommates coming home. I'll have to mute myself in a bit. Uh, investigate the like science tables. Okay. Um, if you like, we're actually coming up on an hour. We could take a break and come back. Might be handy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, when we come back, I'll tell uh, Andy what they see, and uh, I'll also have drank some water. Uh, everyone, uh, go attend to yourself. I don't want to come back and hear, oh, yeah, I was supposed to go pee during the break, but I didn't. Now I've had to pee for an hour. If you don't leave me alone, okay? <laughs> I'm not naming names. You're outing yourself. I told you this last time. You are being, you're adding me directly. I'm literally not saying any names. And you're like, if you don't stop making fun of me for all the things that I've done. This is all you, Rose. Um, oh, Jesus. It's all, so anyway, all you, Rose. Pausing the recording. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go get my fucking drink. I'll leave my mic on, though, so you can hear uh, my cats yelling. Oh, all right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, and we're back. And howdy. <clears throat> text is real. I did have a little five-minute bread date. Um, <clears throat> ooh, are. So, everyone's been doing their stuff. Andy, while perusing the tables of scientific stuff, you found quite a good deal of notes. Um, there's a bunch of sketches of scientific constructs next to the islands. Uh, next to pictures of the island, rather, on a map. So, if you line up your map with that map, you can see that uh, next to the farmlands, there's a sketch of roots. There's a sketch of uh, the, the, the butt side of a plant, more or less. Oh. Um, and observing it closer, you will see that they're all... Uh, interlaced with green veins. Like, you know in, like, a Bioshock when uh, you take in a plasma and your, your veins get all hopped up oh, on yeah. plasma shit? I just started replaying it, so nice. definitely. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's like that, but it's all plants, and they're all growing with green energy. And uh, your assumption is that's what happens to the plants on the farmlands, and probably to the druids, for that matter. They're all getting hopped up on this green power vein, like Tron line shit. <clears throat> yeah, coke druids. Yeah. Hell yeah. Monster energy. <laughs> but it's literal monsters. Yep. <laughs> next to the wooden, uh, next to the wood galaxy, there is a uh, sketch of very primitive, rudimentary weapons and a doodle of like an elf, but as a caveman. Uh, you're pretty sure that they're they're living at like Gilligan's Island over there. It's all it's just all wood. Okay. Um, sketches of the machinery and stuff accessible at Quarter and Castle appears to demonstrate that they are at like a late medieval period, maybe Renaissance level of technology. So they've got like crossbows, ballistae, uh, your odd arablast. Not really gunpowder as such yet, so they don't have cannons. Um, but they've got all manner of uh, crucible steel, forging iron. They've got iron is their bitch. Iron is they can work with that. All right, we got some iron. Hell yeah. Um, Crown Jewel and White Citadel just have uh, question marks over them because the level of technology there is really hard to pin down, not just because of the difficulty of actually getting over there, but it's also very not clear of how much of it is magical and how much of it is not. Uh, next to the market and, you know, next to the deeps as well, just by a function of the location. Um whole bunch of uh, chemical equations and drawings uh, explaining the minerals found inside. Uh, they've got their super strong fantasy metal, you know, adamantine or uh, inth metal or whatever you prefer to call it. They've got gold, iron, jewels. They've got coal. Um, but also they have access to machinery of their own. There's a great deal of uh, research of robotic limbs, prosthetics, and of whole cloth robots. You know, because of them, they're warforged. Okay, yeah. Um, and, you've, and you notice they're rather similar 
to your cohort's arm. Yeah. Uh, and there's a uh, there's an explanation that all them robot arms contain shit in them. Ooh. Uh, you can put stuff in them that will. Do you want me to? Do you want me to like play this as realistic as possible, or do you want me to just fucking like give you give you the fucking the shoot style or the work style? Let's go realistic. Let let, let us do this. All right. Um, the modular machinery of the mechanical m- arms, dude, uh, allows one to slot out certain modules, allowing a fuck it's for twinking you know you can move you can move your stats around with the the shit you put in your arm that's pretty dope yep so if you or anyone gets a robot arm or if they already have one with upgrades available in the deeps or you know stolen off the bodies of dead robots uh you can play around with your stats you can increase uh some stats while decreasing others and Pump up your dump stats or dump your stat even harder. Uh, you can give spells to your character and allow you to essentially memorize fireball by putting a grenade launcher in your wrist. That's so neat. Uh, however, um, your druidic stuff can give you a hint on this, but naturally, it'll also cut off your link to nature. Ooh. Which I'm sure that intrigues you for reasons of your own, but... Some oh, yeah. people might not be down on that, but you know. Huh. All right. Um, He's making some mental notes. Oh, fuck. I forgot the Mako Barracks. Uh, the Mako Barracks have Wild West era guns. They have frontier guns, you know? Big, chunky-ass pistols, pepper boxes, uh, rifles, you know, varmint guns. Yeah. If it's improved by the Perk Cowboy in New Vegas, it's it's, mm-hmm. it's there. So yeah, that's the uh, technology oh. level of everything. That's helpful to know. Yeah. All right. All right. Any further questions? That's all I've got. Anything else from anyone else before we move on to the contents of that identify spell? Um, no, I don't have any questions about the slots, about slotting it out. My question is, um, no, I already asked that beforehand. I don't know. No. Well, well, well my, po- like, where, where, remind me where you told me I have to get my, my thing for my arm. Not the switch out, it's the other thing. Uh, the drugs can actually be assembled here in the Alchem Tower. Okay, I'll have to do that. If you like, you can try swiping some of the reagents here and take them back to Tour de Matri to make them. Oh no, definitely, definitely. I won't. I'm not gonna tell them what I'm doing. I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, that's fair. All you pretend you didn't hear that. (laughs) Out of character. Out of character. It's fine. Anyway, so I'm definitely gonna kill your character next round. (laughs) (laughs) All right, and then so uh, you're ready to hear the contents of identify? Yes, please. So, that is definitely the Alchemist's Alchemist. Uh, layered mm-hmm. on this spell is a shitload of spells casted through normal magical means, divine magical means, and alchemical magical means, making a interwoven lattice of complex spells all kind of sewn into the glove itself. Um, it's got a shitload of protection spells. It's uh, protecting from all manner of magical damage and really all kinds of... Uh, heat, even things like density, gravity. Um, Equipping it will naturally give you a whole bunch of bonuses to alchemy, allowing you to make stuff that you normally couldn't. Um, It will passively buff your intelligence by one point. It will, as long as you have it on, that is. Um, It'll always be glowing, and it'll glow brighter as it's worn, so you could stuff it in a pocket or put it in a bag if you're trying to hide, but you know, bear that in mind. Um, it also grants uh, ease of access to 
certain memorized alchemical recipes, meaning uh, you can make shit easier as long as you know it. You can just imprint it onto the glove, magically, naturally, and the glove will just know how to do it. So as long as you put it on, you're like, I want some of this. It'll whip some up for you. Mm. So all in all, it's a pretty solid thing. Um, the glove itself appears to not be trapped. Uh, magically, at least. And I think that's all for it. So yeah, it is It is an oven mitt. It's a pretty normal oven mitt. It's just jacked out all to hell. It is about as upgraded as you could get an oven mitt, conceivably. If only there were two of them. Um... Okay. Is that is that everything, Dion? That's everything. Okay. Um well. Right, everyone. It looks like it is safe to take. Uh there's no traps that I can foresee. Uh I'd say let's get going then. We have a Mitchruck to meet again. All right. Who's picking this thing up? Uh Andy's gonna go for it. Cool. So I'm going to grab this thing. Um, uh, is Ren nearby? Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to turn into something you can slip into your pocket just in case. <laughs> well, I don't think you'll... <laughs> I don't think you've ever uh, been seen the world through my eyes. I think it'll be an adventure for both of us. It sure as hell will be. He's gonna, make a, he's gonna make a face because he clearly hates this, and he's gonna turn into a little mouse. Yee! He's helping a mouse. <laughs> no, no, the blam, blam, the blam, the blam, the blam. <laughs> mouse with an oven mitt. What will he cook? God damn it! That's what you were. Oh my gosh! I thought you were referencing the witches. Oh my god, <laughs> mother. Fucker. Look, there's only so many cooking rats in the world. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> not a rat. He's a mouse. Sweet. It's an important distinction. Sweet, sweet. Uh, your your uh, your little mouse paw is still glowing and it's discolored uh, with um, autumnal shades because uh, you know got the oven mitt on. Mm-hmm. He's gonna kind of sit like a like a cat loaf, tucking nice. it beneath him. <laughs> And flick his tail up at Rin expectantly. All right, yeah. You got uh, your little Thanos mouse. Rin's going to reach over. Uh, she uh, She's already sitting because she sits for her. She sits to do her rituals and is going to uh, offer a palm to dear Andy and, you know. Go climb in there. I have a, we're just going to say I have a, a, a pocket, a breast pocket, just one, but it's fairly deep. And I'm going to put them in there and tap the pocket gently. Tweak. <laughs> perfect perfect all right you're a whole fucking mouse huh. yeah sweet uh what's its name what's his name um uh, not andy what's his name um archivist yes are you are you ready to to depart have you finished uh archiving more or less i'm pretty good at this and he holds up um, uh like 10 feet of paper on a, on a long long scroll oh my Please take do t- please do take care of that. We shall be going now. Thank you for your uh, archiving. Thank you for giving me your means. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, he stands up and like cracks his wrist. It sounds like a cement mixer full of shit. <laughs> He's got a lot Ooh. of that charcoal tunnel. <laughs> We're gonna mosey on out then. Cool. Sweet. Ren, you want to make a dex roll to try and steal some shit? Uh oh the the fucking fucking fucks yes um let me scroll up for a second and read my stats uh just a regular dex roll uh okay. set a hand if you like um I do like and that's what we're gonna do I remember the formula that 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 plus my stuff and my stuff is there. Wow. <laughs> so I'm never using that this thing ever again. But uh <laughs> Jesus, dude. If you like, you can use that module uh in your arm to just choose to succeed that. Oh I will, yeah. I'll mark one off. Nice. 
Uh, yeah, currently the module located in uh, Ren's arm permits essentially legendary saves on anything that involves her hand. Oh, Indy. Yep. That's super cool. Yeah. Did you say, remind me, was it three per day or was it? Three per day, three per long rest, but you know, three per day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to scoop those into my uh, alchemist satchel and uh, we're going to quietly move on out. Radical. Shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya, as we uh, shimmy out of this place. Hell yeah. I'm gonna cute shuffle right the fuck on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the chicken shit out of here. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Andy, I guess you're free to try to uh, roll to command this horse while you're a mouse, but also you could have someone else do it. Squeak. <laughs> um, realistically, the second we are outside and back in the, the carriage... He is hopping out and turning back into a person and looking ready to uh, punch the nearest structure. Scrubbing his back like he's just laid down in mud. He looks disgusted, furious. He's shaking a little bit. Naturally. He really look. Can, can I mark off a rage? As if he's <laughs> going into a rage right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that tracks, that tracks. I like that. Ah, ah. <laughs> I was so little. I could feel it. You know you didn't have to pick something quite so little. You could have been. I was afraid she was going to wake up. She was going to take us. We need this thing to get home. I would like to not be here. There's a giant scarecrow. I was a mouse. We could have carried you bigger than that, but we appreciate your sacrifice. Just gonna kind of clap him on the back once and hop up in the carriage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. I appreciate. I understand. Uh, where's my words? Where's my voice tonight? Uh, hope it's a gentleman. Uh, uh, there. Uh, hey, I greatly appreciate your uh, your willingness, your dedication to the plan, Andy. I, I acknowledge how difficult it must be for you. <laughs> yeah, damn freaking magic, stupid who. Do you mind helping me into the carriage, dear? Gonna pick you up by the back of your shirt, haul you in there with the reins in the other hand, and just start it. <laughs> he real mad. I will not be asking you again. All right. <laughs> so it is. Ren does not like being manhandled. I will tell you that. He is a. He is currently in rage. I'm I don't aware. know if Ring has like a magical appearance. I always pictured there's like a small red flame around them. Like nothing yeah. painful, but I, I pictured as the eyes get like a red lens flare to shoot. I picture I picture the JoJo auras they add in like part three and four, where it's the they have their own colored auras and I just picture it just red. Yeah. Just red. Do -do -do. To make it worse, there's little mouse ears. Do -do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> powerful powerful i love it i love it all right so you guys heading back the way you came uh unless it's a faster route i would say yes you could try cutting directly over the core no not advisable okay. oh that's also fine you guys head on back It's a very long thing that I'll uh, kind of just go over. Um, the Marker and the Deeps in their strange little orbit, uh, they kind of have like a planetary orbit going on. They're re they revolve around the core, and the market revolves around the Deeps. Um, so they're in slightly a different place when you get back, but not too different. Uh, the Wooden Galaxy is completely unrecognizable. Like, it's... It's a big fucking shithole full of wood, but beyond that, it is. It's it's a different place altogether. Uh, it is entirely another place. Um, farmlands are pretty much identical. Uh, and as you're getting back to Tour de Matri, uh, night is falling. 
Fake night? Yeah, uh, this big rock uh, every so often just goes kind of in front of the sun. That's what night is here. Is it? How long is the journey back to the matriarch's uh, tower? It's like four hours. Oh, I'm taking a short rest. I mean, I don't, I don't need to recover anything. I literally, she's just gonna take a nap. Cool. That tracks. Buster's, Buster's playing fucking solitaire with herself. Yes. Nice. I like that. All right. Now comes the time for me to remember what voice the matriarch had unless unless Ives darts uh, it's like I don't know nothing about that voice. just that I can okay. <laughs> what what are those your fingers what, what? it's a oh. video on his channel no I'm, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the old thing to try to find a fucking voice clip of the matriarch I don't think it's gonna work out for me oh Jesus <laughs> So I've remained fairly unaware of the Femboy Hooters meme. This is one we gotta talk about off mic because it's so complicated. <laughs> I don't Where's even wanna just I don't even wanna talk about it. I just you really threw me for a fucking loop when you said it. It's holding it down, man. <sighs> My whole brain is just broken. Yep. Big old brain snap. I kind of expected it to take us a lot longer to get the the Thanos glove. Yeah, if you think you're panicking about how quick that was, what do you think I feel? <laughs> it's like, oh shit, they had identify ready? Fuck. <laughs> So anyway, you guys get back to Tour de Matri. Uh, the matriarch uh, awakens from what appears to be a nap. Um, her tentacles have all been like balled up to her shoulder, but as she wakes up, they all unfurl like a like a big curtain almost. And she unwinds the like scarf that she kind of was using as a blanket, just tangling herself in it really. Uh, she's hello, like, hello. Hello, welcome back. Hello, Matriarch. We have retired. Uh, we have uh, retrieved the item you requested of us. That was pretty quick. That was like eight hours. That was exactly long enough for like a long rest, plus like ten minutes. Indeed. Um, I'm pretty impressed. Were you seen at all? She was asleep. I don't think so. Wow. Um, I guess that's the downside of being like mostly human. I'm pretty sure she's like all human. Uh, but at this point, she might have drunk some shit that mutates her. She using a is she still using that like weird mutant mutagen shit in the walls? Something uh, fucking green, very green. Sounds like her. Yeah, uranium glass. That's uh, that's bad shit. Watch out for that. Mm. Anyway, um, I guess it's time for my part. I did agree so what do you guys want to do here do you want to do you want to just go right into it or do you want to do a side quest or <laughs> where exactly will we be sent are we Some being sent somewhere somewhere else if that makes any sense would it be nice to get some money together before just in case Assuming they even use money? Um, I think you'll be in pretty good company there. Quick question. Somewhere else, as in somewhere here, or somewhere like where they am from? Somewhere completely different. An adjacent dimension. All right. <laughs> the nearest dimension, that is to say. Am I also going? Um, as discussed, my theory is that we have a mutual benefactor. I can't share too, too much about his name, um, or really who he is until, you know, you get there. I wouldn't want you to, how do I put this? I wouldn't want you to get, like, mind-fucked by an angel and have them find out where everything is, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him handle that. Good to know that that's apparently 
pass. Yeah. Uh, Angelic it, psionics. It's a, it's a, it's a bad deal. It's a bad trip. Gonna kind of nudge Andy. Like, can you do that? <laughs> I, I never tried. I could give it an attempt, but that sounds mighty Dumb. disgusting. Archie kind of speaks up. He's not like, and say that we didn't. I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten any psychics yet, so I don't have any of their powers. So, but in the second you find me one, I can get on that. You gotta stop eating people. Also, the matriarch notices that he's she's, that he's inside, and, and she's like, "No, bad, get out, bad Archie." <laughs> Does she have a spray <laughs> bottle? Yeah, she hits him with a newspaper or like a rolled up newspaper. Yeah, <laughs> hits him with that rolled up newspaper. <laughs> the fantasy times it says man the planet is still blown up crazy anyway how are you all shit's doing still fucked, dog. <laughs> <laughs> just a shit still fucked it just has a picture of a blown up planet <laughs> i would love so much for them to be a real newspaper headline <laughs> it's like futurama tier honestly it is still <laughs> messed up out here y'all anyway how are you doing says the second line <laughs> just talking to you as though the newspaper is a person. <laughs> Why are you reading this instead of doing other things? The Who third reads line newspapers said. anymore? What are you? Why? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, article. <laughs> <laughs> article by some guy. I don't know. Anyway, is there lunch yet? Did they get here? Just <laughs> says all this stupid shit on the newspaper. <laughs> I'd buy it. Oh, oh God. Um, I want to ask how much, how many potions did I have with the supplies I swept? Uh, I believe you will have a total of 26 when you're all done here. Okay, then I'm willing, I, I'm willing to take the chance to be transported as long as I have enough of that. 26 okay. worth seem worthwhile. Okay. Um, the matriarch is asking if everyone's ready. Then, I, I, I yes, affirmative. Okay, everyone else. Mm -hmm. Might as well. Fuck it. Sure, I can't get any more dead to my friends. Let's go. <laughs> All right, then it's time for my part. Um, she takes the uh, alchemist from you. Yeah. Uh, and cuts open a vein in her shin. Yeah. And bleeds into this big dish on the floor. Fuck sake. And then she uh, wraps it up with a bandage. Can't heal it with magic. That'd be cheating. And then starts throwing a whole bunch of shit in there. Just like various dusts, uh, a cool looking rock, um, like silver powder, uh, and a, just a a rainbow of what appears to be like shampoos and conditioners. It's Gotta make sure all, it's nice and soft. Yeah, it's probably all highly toxic, but you know, that's what it looks like to y'all. Um, and then she comes to this like neon blue uh, bottle that kind of vibrates as she touches it. And she very, very carefully uncorks it and very slowly tips it just a little bit until like one big Tom and Jerry drop falls into the center of the big dish on the floor and the whole thing explodes into a big cloud of uh, green smoke. And when that clears, a electric blue portal is swirling where the liquid was. Quick question. They got guns over there? Or am I going to need stuck up on bullets? Um, I don't think they have guns, as a matter of fact. But I'm not sure if you're going to be in very much danger. All right, fuck it. I got some. Let's go. Okay. I'm going to roll a 1d100, and we're going to see how y'all do. Oh, dear. I feel very comforted. Oh, wow. That's pretty great. Is um, it? Yes. There's this absolute. I, I showed this to Daisy when uh, when we were doing some DM uh, some DM shit uh, last time she was here, I think, or maybe two times ago. But uh, there's this massive table concerning uh, teleportation and a D100, 
Uh, if you low two roll, you just get sent all to fuck. Uh, and mm, the Jesus. more someone it's knows true. about it, it yeah, the more someone knows about where they're sending you, the closer you'll get. So this relatively low roll isn't a big deal because she knows what she's doing. All right. Um, you all end up in what appears to be the matriarch's home dimension. Uh, the grass is all even grayer and shittier. The grass is, it looks like some fucking Tim Burton fuckhole. It is, the grass is black and gray. The dirt is like, it's, it's like powdered steel. Uh, the footpaths are all jagged and crusty. Uh, and about 100 feet in front of you, there is a massive, massive castle wall uh, made of entirely black stone with silver veins throughout the stone as though it contains ore that hasn't been, like, knocked out of the stone. Uh, it's a very stereotypical castle, just huge, black, uh, and full of that silver stuff. Um, feel free to explore from here. Uh, I need us to pause because my entire computer shut off. But the mic, did, like, like the screen's dead. I have no clue why. Oh boy! But I can still hear. I can still hear you guys. So we have to pause if that's okay. Maybe okay, I will pause the recording. Mode. Yeah, because I want to. I don't know what the H it happened. It said like warning because the, the screen darkened, and it said warning timed out. And I was like, okay, what the fuck? I'll, I'll, I'll. I guess I'll, you know, make it untime out. And then it said. I don't know that it just like it went it dimmed and it went dark. It's fully charged, so I don't know what's happening. All right, pause this, this recording scary. now. Recording, yay, we're back. Little uh, little technical snafu there. Don't worry about it. Indeed. So yeah, you're back in this um like it's it would be monochrome, but you can see that you guys are still like in color. So it's not just that the world is black and white. It's just that all of this shit is. Mm hmm. Um. In the distance, you can see uh, purple and blue signal fires uh, lighting the path and stuff like that. Ooh. Um, and at the very top of this tower is an absolutely massive uh, gray and blue bonfire um, that is doing all kinds of stuff. It's flickering in the wind. Uh, it's glowing. And uh, every so often, it appears to shoot a big ass laser into the sky. Oh. Well. As I say, you guys cool. are like 100 feet or um, 20 squares away from this castle. So if you're willing to walk up to it, you're free to. But you can also go explore elsewhere. But the castle was pretty clearly where you were supposed to go. It just. She rolled bad and sent you a little off course. Uh, I say we proceed to the castle simply because if it's safe there, we'll have at least shelter and door vantage point. Cool. Yep. Plus he's kind of looking around like, what the f- there's no fucking co- This feels like the time I got hit in the head real hard. <laughs> maybe we- maybe we did get hit real hard. I don't remember a whole lot about the journey here beyond yeah. Flash. Yeah, I didn't explain it enough. That's on me. <laughs> um, yeah, you're freaking out. Like, the sky's only above you as opposed to everywhere. That's fucked up. What's up with that? Plus, she's, like, touching the back of her head, trying to, like, feel for blood or bumps. Like, blood, what yeah. the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you guys gonna head on in? Yes, yeah. might as well. A absolutely mm -hmm. massive creek. Um, the noise, not like a, a river. No. Yeah, big ass massive fucking creek happens and just... And it opens on up. Um, and as you walk in, you're greeted with uh, a very black hallway that lights up and... Torch sconches all the way down the very long hall, light in uh, dark purple. Fluttering in wind that isn't there, shouldn't be there, is still somehow. Um, very, very uh, cool effect. Um, at least someone seems to hope that it is. Uh, you can it's see like that Lester's definitely drawn her gun. Yeah. You can see that down the center of the hall is a uh, thick 
well, a wide uh, purple carpet, rather. Um, it's a very thin carpet, just kind of like a little skin on top of the stone. Um, but yes, the veins inside the black stone this uh, castle's built out of still persist. So it's still very, very dark in here. Um, everything, everything absorbs light. Well, the rug is still has its, has maintained its normal color. It's not just bathed in purple light. It appears to be truly purple. Yep. It's interesting. So, if you would like to continue deeper in, you're free to. Well, I'm gonna. Ha Can I do like a perception check or something? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Like investigation some fucking shit like that i don't know start rolling dice i've got your would... sheet open okay that's that's six <laughs> uh wow it's a big ass castle a lot of rocks <laughs> all right that's all i got <laughs> fuck it <laughs> uh just keep your weapons handy lads and uh let's move on move on move on in forward all right, so it's just the three of you walking forward. Uh, your steps echo against the very, very high ceiling. Mm, don't like that. Somewhere oh, in a Andy. parallel dimension, Shrek and Donkey ask each other, do you think he's compensating for something? <laughs> Andy. Andy, I just realized we stranded the dude without... He took the car keys. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Archie. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck. Also, he had information on the world that we were originally. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, shit. You, why was you kick him out and ban him? So. Oh, what? why does he, he have to eat people? <laughs> maybe, maybe she'll let him in or take him somewhere. I don't know. But I just realized that we have keys and no uh, transportation, so that's not super useful. And he has transportation, the no keys. Oh dear. Can you hot a little? Maybe she'll take pity on him. Oh wait, can we go back to that? Can you hotwire a horse? <laughs> it's a legitimate <laughs> question. It is. It runs on keys. A Andy, Andy, dear, can you hotwire a horse? That would require them to have any warmth in their body whatsoever. <laughs> Are you implying that they're cold, cold, cold creatures because of your previous misadventures? It's exactly what I am doing. <laughs> well, okay, I'll, I'll be sure to not uh, mention this again. Hopefully he'll be all right. Maybe eating some angels helped him some. Maybe we hurry. I, I don't know. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I wish I thought about that before we left. But... Oh, this is great. Oh, I love this. <laughs> emergent gameplay, y'all. This is emergent gameplay right here. <laughs> it's um, guilt. <laughs> it's that, too. Yeah. Yeah. So you all come to a second set of big doors after a big-ass hallway. Quite the lead-up. Quite the lead-up. Um, <laughs> these doors are made of, uh, gray wood. They are very clearly carved out of something massive, some big ass, like, humbaba tree. Um, they are dark gray with tiny, tiny little silver doorknobs. Um, they're pretty big, honestly. They're probably, like, the size of Ren's head, but compared to the door, they're little. <laughs> I probably cannot reach them, so... Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of shove it and hope it opens. Yeah. It swings open pretty freely and opens up to a massive throne room. There is a ginormous uh, black and silver throne. This one uh, is just black stone inlaid with what you can clearly tell is Mithril. Or, you know, whatever fantasy metal we're using this time around. Oh, my heart's racing. I'm so excited. I don't trust this. Um, in this room, there are eight massive... Uh, they appear to be statues at first, but as you look nearer, they're actually uh, dead men reanimated wearing suits of armor. 
Oh, fucking hell. Each one has a uh, large, luxurious blue cape um, and a scarf wrapped around their head, partially obscuring their uh, semi-rotted face. Uh, they're all each carrying a absolutely massive sword. Like, those kind of anime swords that you could fucking surfboard on, they've all got one of those. <laughs> they all got cloud swords. Absolutely, yeah. Big-ass buster swords. <laughs> the dragon fucker. Too big, too thick to be a fucking <laughs> sword, but fuck, man, that shit's crazy. <laughs> Jesus. Um, there are still... Uh, all manner of purple and blue torch sconces along the walls. And at the very, very far side of the room, looking almost little in the, uh, in the chair is a, uh, kind of a half man, half mountain. He's fucking huge. Um, he's decked out in mithril armor. He is also very clearly undead at his side is a dented chipped beat up piece of shit sword. Um, you can tell that it's a rough chunk of iron that has been reinforced by just kind of dipping it in mithril to try to make sure that it doesn't keep breaking. Uh, the cape that he would normally be wearing like the others, uh, purple instead of blue like theirs, is uh, just kind of tossed over the back of his big-ass throne. And he's lounging kind of, uh, uh, not exactly condescendingly, but he's very at peace. He feels very assured of himself. You who were supposed to be meeting? Uh, yes. Welcome. It's nice to see three that I can speak to as equals. Howdy. Um, he waves his hand and, uh, all eight of the other knights in the room plant their swords into the ground and then kind of sit against them idly, just, you know, hanging out. And the one before them all, uh, stands up and kind of just uh, stumbles and trips down the stairs that lead up to his throne until he's before you. He's fucking huge. He's probably like eight feet tall. And he says, my friends, I was the one who summoned you. I have a job offer if you like that. Um, but let me be the first to welcome you to Naraka my realm, my dimension, and to the throne room, specifically, that's where you are now, the throne room of Almaest the Grim, for that's who I am. So, you have a job offer for us. You realize that if you have the power to rip us from our planes, you could have just asked instead of making it happen, and we, we ended up in jail. That was the idea. I didn't know how far-reaching the teleportation block spell was. Kind of a oversight on my part, I understand. Or not. I mean, it would have gotten me it. sent to jail. Regardless, I was there in the first place. I have more. You would have gotten out. You belong here. It's not like you were ripped from across planes and dimensions and earth and heavens. You need our help? Yes, I do, in fact. Then how can we be of service, Mr. Grimm? Well, I uh, currently operate as uh, god king of this demiplane here. Naraka, if you like. Um, it's a bit of an anomaly in terms of planes. It was originally two, but before that it was one, but before that it was... It's a, it's a whole fucking thing. I don't have to get into it now. Um... They began to fuse together, and now I rule over this realm of the partially dead and also of demons and stuff. Uh, demons and angels historically do not get along well. So after they destroyed and, in their words, conquered their home plane, the devas, the angels, uh, have been attempting to take over mine next. And I assume that once they figure out how to fuck with my dimension reliably, uh, there's really not much to stand in the way of the whole multiverse being taken over. So, that's where I'm at. I'll take your you've silence got, as awe. You've got all this 
all his power, the ability to rip some strangers from their homes. And you think the the three of us are going to be able to protect the multiverse from angels and the like. More or less. I've got, I've got reasons. Don't worry. I'm not crazy. Gonna kind of look, just look at him and then gesture to the other two like, uh, sidebar, real quick. Mm-hmm. Kind of mm-hmm. just... He'll kind of step back and give you give you a chance. All right, so he's clearly fucking crazy. So what the hell are we gonna do about this? Um, he's like, like he's like four times the dangerous lady size. His sword's big enough to cleave us all if he sneezes. I'm Don't terrified, me. and that's pretty fucking unusual. I have a bit of a feeling that he won't let us go home. Either how the matriarch sent us here and who knows how much further her power can reach with someone else equally or more powerful blocking it. Because I feel like I don't know if we'll be allowed to leave if we don't help. If we do teleport back in, we will just go straight to jail. We did escape once. I mean, yeah, but we killed a guy and then you started like throwing up. I ain't never seen no corpses before. This is all very you new. Hang I ain't never had to fight nobody beyond I've been you living. You said you put a dead guy up in your field, but you never seen a corpse before? Not one that we cleaved in half and shot. All right, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I ain't never seen nobody's insides on their outsides. Well, you're just having a whole world first, aren't you, darling? <laughs> all right, sidebar over. Kind of pat their backs once and turn back to the guy. Uh, he kind of walks back over and he's like, um, I overheard a little bit. I can send you home from here. The issue is getting to this dimension without stepping into the angels realm, which, you know, did happen. But from here, you're free to go home. Now, Mm -hmm. I, as the DM, would like that to not happen because then the campaign's over and we all go home. (laughs) But, you we're, know, that's up, that's up to you guys. We're three just fucking chuckle fucks. Two of us are borderline illiterate, and she's like three feet tall. What the fuck do you expect us to do? Um, basically an assassination mission. Let me, let me start over from the beginning. Um, so the angels destroyed their home planet, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Take notes if you want. This is going to be the Lord dump. They destroyed their home planet. They activated a massive super weapon that really wasn't supposed to be theirs to begin with. Um, they got a hold of it and ruined everything. Uh, without a home planet or really much of anything, the fabric of reality in that whole plane of existence is starting to get really thin and wispy. You know, the veil isn't known for being particularly thick. It's a fucking veil, but like, man, is the veil thin there. <laughs> So, as they stand, they're currently uh, primed to finish taking over that place. They've got a few problems. Um, the matriarch knows a little more about them than I do, but as I say, they, uh, they'll they figure out something for everyone. As soon as that happens, I've got to worry about them more directly. They've been coming here um, in the hopes of killing me. They... And he, he kind of chokes up and uh, sucks on his knuckle a bit. Um, they've killed a lot of people very close to me. And his eyes kind of drift over to like a large painting of uh, one of the former demon kings of hell. Uh, and he, he kind of shakes his head wistfully. Um, he returns to his chair and starts slowly climbing the stairs back up to it before he sits down and continues the story. Uh Back when those wars were beginning, I didn't really feel too worried about it. Um, but they've uh, they've got some serious shit I've never seen. Uh, being as that I'm an unholy paladin and also uh, one of the kings of hell now, I think uh, the laws are a little weird. Yeah, king of hell and all. Um, I'm like double, triple, super effective weak to uh, holy stuff. And that's uh, their angels. That's their whole deal. 
I don't really have a lot in the way of defense. Even though I am practically a physical god, they can cut through me like butter still. Four angels are pretty good to match me. Nah, not to s the least to speak of an army. We've got the clones I've built here. And he gestures at the, uh, the knights who are all sitting down. One of them kind of waves his hand a little bit. Another one nods. So, you know, they're just relaxing. But all of those are extremely expensive to make. And still, that's just... Nine of me instead of one of me, and like I said, four angels is a match for one of me. You can work out the math on that army, uh, and I'll tell you, it is a lot bigger than whatever four times nine is. You guys, on the other hand, have, uh, well, you two have the element of surprise, because they don't know what the hell you're about, and you have the element of knowing what's going on, because you're from here. That's the theory, at least, and he just all of you in turn. Uh, my plan is to hire you all for some assassination missions, shall we say. Uh, key targets. Get uh, the places of that dimension all on one side, if at all possible. And, well, kill a whole bunch of angels along the way, if that's to your liking. Multiversal riches and power beyond measure is yours, but, you know, that's up to you. What's more, your uh -huh. home dimensions will forever be safe from angel attack because... Uh, you know, all of them are going to be dead. That's the idea, at least. We'll be protecting our homes by defeating these creatures. Not to mention avenging my husband and some other people. These angels are assholes. I'm starting to pick up on that. They are assholes, yeah. He's not wrong. The other thing, this is this is kind of a pipe dream, but as uh, as it goes, the whole dimension is starting to destabilize. The only reason that place has an atmosphere is because the planet had one, and that atmosphere is starting to drift apart. For the past hundred years or so, or so, the matriarch tells me, um, she can be trusted, by the way, she's an old friend of mine, but for the past hundred years, the atmosphere in there has been getting thinner and thinner, and eventually it's going to dissipate to nothing. There's no gravity holding in place, just momentum holding in place. And eventually that's all going to dissipate into nothing. So if at all possible, I'd like to maybe pull that dimension into mine. But as the current state is, that's uh, really unsafe since they've, uh, they've, got, uh, they've got my kryptonite in there. What's, uh, what's, if provided we can manage to fight through a literal army of angels, what's stopping you from sweeping in and taking over? How about this? I've already got this whole realm of existence. What would I want with another one? You just said you were considering combining them. Yeah. So. But there's no reason that if I have you... to upset that monarchy. I mean, I had to upset this monarchy, but that was a whole deal. Don't even, don't even get into that with me. I Don't get me started. Um, the Quartering Kingdom can exist as they are. The deeps, the deeps are problematic, but we can talk about that. Um, but yes, everything can be as it is. They'll just float above me. It's like adding countries to a continent that already exists. I don't have to take them over. I don't really intend to. I like ruling the undead. They hold no interest for me there. If you come for my people, I will put a bullet in you. Well, how about this? Um, he cuts his, uh, his hand open and, uh, not blood, Jesus. but like, uh, dust kind of falls out. And uh, he snaps his hand, and through magic, the uh, blood forms into some words. And uh, they say, in every language ever known to anyone, I promise I won't. Thanks, Grim. Oh, my God. Look, there's no, there's no reason to not go overboard if you're going to make a blood oath. It's a whole deal, you know? Fair enough. I imagine that's about as good a promise I'm going to get. Yeah, I will literally combust. I'm not in as much a paladin in the traditional sense anymore, but I am still bound to oaths. All right. Fuck it. How do we get back and start killing people? Well, I've got some ideas. Take this from my hand. And he holds it out and extends it to any one of you. Go ahead and take the small magical item from his hand. Oh, I'll take it, I guess. Can okay. you reach it? Can you not? 
He is eight feet <laughs> tall, actually. Can you reach him? No, thankfully a tiny person, okay? Can she not make a comment as such? Not can she literally not re- anyway, <laughs> Rin will jump up and grab it. Kobe. Uh, he kind of notices your metal arm, and he's like, "Ooh, that could be problematic." I'm, uh, I'm sorry about this. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> you feel like an electrical shock uh, through the hand that took it. I grabbed it with my human hand, so okay, that's not, that's not good. Um, and he's like, "Yeah, that." Okay, so there were some details I should have mentioned. Uh, you feel a uh, burning sensation on your palm. And uh, you lose uh, about 12 hit points. Ren starts swearing and drops the object. Uh, it's stuck to your fingertips. We're supposed to trust you and you out here, cur- you're out here. And you're going to curse me? I, look, it's, yes, but let's be, let's be honest here. Good curse, right? There's no such thing as oh, a good curse. That's yeah, just check, a spell. Check this out. Uh, he taps you on the hand, um, and you regain your hit points through his magical touch, and you also gain one level of warlock. Ren hisses. Ren hisses at his uh, physical content contact, but shivers at the change. Uh, this will allow me to contact you no matter what dimension you're in. It also gets you uh, unique spells. We can talk about those later, but that's how the plan is to kill the angels. There's unique debuffs that only angels can take on, but, you know, that's the idea at least. Putting those on you means that you have a chance to, you know, go crazy and shoot them. We did also just kill one regular. Like, my question was more, how do we get back there? Oh. Um, uh, one of these should be fine. And he hands you a small bottle that could, appears to contain the same electric blue potion uh, that the matriarch had. Gonna take it real fucking gingerly. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's wise. Be gentle with that. Um, I'll I'll give you a few anywhere. Uh, he gives you another three potions exactly. So if you like, you can all add, um, you know, a potion to your inventory or. Let someone hold all four, whatever you like. Each one of those is a potion of dimensional travel. They will allow you to gateway back here whenever you like. Um, and Grim also has a full supply of all of them. So you don't need to use them to get back. We should probably each have at least one. Yes, I don't believe that... I don't believe that uh, uh, Artie and Artie... Uh, the archivist should be needing one, but yes, I will take one for myself at least. That so little fellow is problematic, it? but he has a few right ideas about uh, eating the hearts of his enemies. He's just... His heart's in the right place. Uh, the, the, the one he was born with, at least. You're saying more and more things that make me regret this, dear Grim. Well... I'm not even gonna fucking ask. Uh... Anyway, yeah, I should be able to contact you wherever you are now, no matter where that is. Um, You're free to take levels in Warlock. Uh, Yeah, that should cover everything. Any other questions? Uh, If you could just write down for us our exact duties, because I promise you we get to talking and sometimes lose track of where we are. All right. You ever play Dragon Age Origins? You're doing that. Well, as I'm still trying to complete my journey to being a gamer girl XD, but <laughs> I don't know anything about Dragon Age, really. <laughs> All right, he stands up and he and he uh, leans forward and he uh, interlaces his fingers over his sword, and uh, uh, wind somehow uh, f- blows his cape onto his back, and he says, "Heroes, your quest is this: travel to the various islands." Ally them together for a final stand against the armies of the angel. And then, in a glorious battle, we will retake the plane. And there will be peace. There will be peace when the people of the world want it so much that the angels have no choice but to give it to them. Uh, Lightning strikes behind him. Which is weird because you're all inside and stuff. 
but like he yeah, appears Wayne to jumps back a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's your quest anyway. And he uh, sits down like uh, kind of sheepish. Ah. Uh, well, we accept and we shall be on our way. However, don't ever hand me anything ever again in this world you or another. It. I'll be seeing you all then. Here, take one of these. And he tosses, uh, he just tosses one of the electric blue potions straight onto the floor at your feet. Uh, and he gestures his hand. He's like, I hope we'll be seeing each other again soon. I do enjoy our visits. I'm sorry about your husband, Mr. Grimm. He kind of tips, uh, tips his head to you. And uh, he says, we've all lost things irreplaceable. And then he looks up behind his throne where there's a large cracked mirror. And then he shakes his head again. At this point, all I have is revenge. So... And he kind of extends his hand forward to you in like a gesture of like bromance, friendship, you know, confederacy, kinship and all that shit. And he yeah. says, let's never stop making them pay. If it'll keep everyone safe, uh, boy, howdy. Always a plus whenever bloodlust can also help. Well, he's got plenty of that. Good luck, you right. three. You're going to need it. Go kill some angels for me. And with that, uh, the cape kind of falls in front of him like a curtain, and he vanishes. What the fuck? Why would he vanish inside of his own castle? Uh, one of the other clones is like, oh, he does that. Saves the... Uh, he doesn't have to walk to his bedroom that way. Oh my goodness. Rin, Rin sighs. I mean, I... Yes? I, I do relate to the laziness, but I also can't teleport. <laughs> I just get up off my ass and walk. Yeah, one of them nods. He's like, dude, if you, if you got teleportation, your legs Maybe would atrophy to sticks. Well, back to the plane we go, and Ren hops in the portal. All right. Everyone else? <laughs> Uh, Andy will go last, yeah. give him a look around the place before he goes. All right. Is there anything special about the mirror he looked at? Um, it was very clearly magical at one point, uh, and after it's shattering, it no longer is. Okay. Are there any paintings in the room? Uh, yes. There's one of a man who appears to be uh, Snoop Dogg. I knew it, god damn it. <laughs> uh, there's someone of like a weird mind player girl. Yeah. Uh, there's like a big friendly gray elf lady. Uh, this demon. A couple of demons, in fact. Incredible. Scribbled beneath it is uh, uh, a small elvish uh, word in... Uh, oh, in mithril, right, yeah. Um, yeah. Scribbled beneath it is a small mithril plaque uh, of an elvish word. It reads melon. Like watermelon? Uh, with two L's. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is Sindar in, if you prefer, specifically. Interesting. I will ask Ar Archie about it. Uh, I will jump through the portal as well. All right. You all return to the realm of the regular, where only a little bit of time has passed. Uh, the matriarch still hasn't put the bottle back on the shelf, and she's like, oh, you're back. Um, was he uh, eight feet tall, gray, uh, kind of severe, but kind of also a goofball? Tragic. Yeah. Yeah. He was something. He's a lot of things. Um, any one of you get blood cursed? Bryn raises so her mouth. Her, um, her human hand. Oh, her, hum what, her no hand. <laughs> yeah. The Nand. <laughs> oh, man. Um, that'll come out. Although, if you like, we can work on getting you some, like, curse breakers. But the extra hit points will be good. That is, like, a real level in Warlock, as though you were just leveled up and multiclassed. Mm. 
Ren Ren rubs Ren rubs the for freaking harm where the burn happens and just goes, I don't think the pain was worth it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's uh, ooh. um. If you like, we can also try to find a way to transfer it to one of your friends. Now that you know what it is, they might not. Uh, they might not dislike a level in warlock. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see about that. At the moment, I'm just happy that we know what we're intended to do here. All right. So uh, I'm guessing you had some large, grandiose plan about killing angels. More or less. Yeah. All right. Well, got a lot of stops that you could take. A um, whole lot of places you could go. Maps open to you. Next time on Ten Rounds of Missing, and then it cuts to credits. All right. That's the session, everyone. Fantastic. Woo. What do you guys all think? I knew I had a feeling we were going to be running into Grim. <laughs> you for said Grim, and I was know. like, "Hang on." For the listeners who do not know, my very first D and D campaign was a disaster, it and was there are not. so many references. It was not a disaster. It was awesome. We loved it. The I enemy was based entirely on a dating sim character that I hated, <laughs> but we killed him. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was also very- fun. Snoop Dogg was there. He was. Yeah, and he got married to uh, Grim. Yeah, to my was... character. It was quite hey, romantic. Is that, is that Echo's mirror then? Yes. No. Oh. I trapped a boy in a mirror because I'm cruel and mean. He's so good. I love him. Well, now we gotta we gotta help with that too. We have to avenge Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah. We have to avenge Snoop Dogg. Sir Calvin. Oh, it's just a good sentence. Just, we have to avenge Snoop Dogg. (laughs) It's a mighty task if there ever were one. (laughs) Wow. We got some big tasks to undertake. We have, a, we have a whole series of worlds to save. Yeah. I think we shouldn't start with the Mako Barracks because they're more likely to fight with us when we have money. Yeah. And we have no money. <laughs> you, said we sh- you said should not, though. We shouldn't start with them, no. Like, they're not exactly the work pro bono sorts. They're mercenaries. Yeah. So you're suggesting we buy them? I mean, I'm suggesting we wait until later and then we buy them, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen, no. I know my people. I know what I'm about. It'd probably be easiest to start with the country land or uh, the farmland. Yeah. Ugh. What a mess. This is going to be, this is going to be, we got to talk to people now. Yeah. Gotta be charismatic. <laughs> Cannot fucking apologize. Just for him. I love it. So happy. All right, yeah, that's the session, everyone. See Ooh. you guys next week. Indeed. Yeah. All right, I'll cut the recording. That's been ten rounds of missing, everyone. Thanks for coming for this other uh, slap happy fucking madcap sesh. Adios. Where we talk about Kansas for an hour. <laughs> we did. There's a lot of that first chunk that is. There's all a Kansas. lot of that that was just Kansas. I'm Oops. world. Building. All Kansas. 